In Good Shape, your weekly dose of health information on DWTV. Find out more about what's new in medical treatment, alternative medicine, as well as nutrition and beauty. Medical professionals, therapists, and counselors are in our studio every week to offer their expert advice on In Good Shape. Someone who has saved many stroke patients is my guest in the studio today, Dr. Arno Willringer from the, the head of the German Stroke Competence Network. Thanks for joining us. You're welcome. Dr. Willringer, um, a stroke can affect different people in quite different ways. What are the most common symptoms? The most common symptoms are a sudden onset of weakness, numbness, uh, problems in speaking, walking or seeing, or a sudden onset of headache. The most important feature really is these are all sudden symptoms. Mm -hmm. So you say it's sudden, but are there sometimes warning signs before a stroke? Yes, that's very important. About a third or half of the patients had previously warning signs. Uh, and actually the symptoms are the very same. The same that I just mentioned, also with a sudden onset. The difference being they disappear after 10 minutes, half an hour or an hour. And uh, then the patient thinks, oh, Everything's over, I'm fine, I'm fine again. Mm -hmm. No, uh, this is also to be treated as an emergency. They also should go to an hospital immediately in order to avoid a later stroke to occur. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you have to be really watchful and know your symptoms. Who is especially at risk? Who, who is uh, prone to a stroke? Actually, everybody. If you have these symptoms, if you are young or old or female or male, whatever, uh, you should consider that this is a symptom of a stroke. Mm -hmm. There are some people who are more at risk and those uh, who are older and have uh, so-called risk factors, you all know them, high blood pressure, obesity, smoking uh, or diabetes. Mm -hmm. What about if someone in your family has suffered a stroke? Should you be worried? If this person was elderly and had risk factors such as high blood pressure, don't worry. Just look at your own risk factors. Mm -hmm. If you have a spouse, uh, no, not a spouse, but if you have uh, a sister or a father who had a stroke at the onset of, say, 30 or 40, then uh, you should check with your doctor to see whether you also have some early indications of arteriosclerosis that could predispose you to a stroke. Uh, but this is very rare. Mm -hmm. So uh, what kind of examinations can a doctor do to, to establish? If you're in a high risk group, what kind of checkups should you be getting? Um, high blood pressure, so he will measure your blood pressure, measure your glucose content for uh, indication whether you have diabetes, uh, look at the heart, uh, whether it's rhythmic or not. So these are the most important uh, features that a doctor should check. Uh, and then he can decide, or she, whether you are in a risk group or not. Mm -hmm. Okay, but best thing is probably to try and prevent all this. Uh, how yes. do you prevent a stroke? Now, uh, look uh, whether you have risk factors, treat them, and also simple things such as physical activity. An hour walk a day is a very good and efficient way to prevent stroke. Dr. Willringer, what do you think about that form of stroke therapy where a stent is used to remove a clot that's blocking an artery? That's actually a very interesting approach, very innovative. On the other hand, at this point, it's really an experimental treatment, not for everybody, only in very specialized center where it will be evaluated whether it works. And if it works, then it will be translated into a general treatment. Mm -hmm. So something for later, maybe. Yeah. What about um, a stand being used to keep an artery open? Is that an effective therapy, acute therapy for strokes? Yeah, in the acute phase or in the, in the chronic phase? Uh, in the acute phase, it's experimental. In the chronic phase, it's been used widely in large parts of the world. However, the clinical studies to evaluate that have been rather negative. So if you have, for example, an occluded vessel here, the carotid artery, which supplies the brain, then the best thing, uh, if you need it, is to do a surgery to reopen the vessel. Mm -hmm. So from your experience, what are the most uh, effective forms of therapy, acute therapy for stroke patients? Now, in the acute phase, there's one therapy that is widely used and very well established, which is the so-called thrombolysis. You get a drug and this drug uh, dissolves the thrombus that occludes the, the vessel. Clot. Mm -hmm. Yes, the yeah. clot that uh, occludes the vessel and then blood flow is restored and basically oxygen comes back 
uh, to the brain and the brain cells can survive. Mm -hmm. If that is being done within the first 4.5, 4 4.5 hours, then it's an efficient treatment uh, and millions of people in the world get this uh, nowadays. Mm -hmm. um, if the brain cells, though, have been damaged already, people um, suffer you know, disabilities and might need a, a longer treatment, rehabilitation, what, what forms of treatments are being done there? It very much depends on what kind of symptoms you have. So if you have uh, a hemiplegia, so if you are paralyzed, uh, then physiotherapy is the most efficient and most important thing. If you have speech disturbances, speech therapy to be done. If you have a problem remembering things, then of course a specialized treatment for that should be performed. So we have to tailor therapy to the individual patient. And then the most important thing is practice, practice, practice. It never stops. So uh, even after two years, five years, you still can benefit from such a treatment. Mm -hmm. So your brain can always sort of learn something again, uh, which, which has been forgotten after a damage. Um, how hard sort of should this therapy be? Should you be sort of soft on yourself and rest or should you be really trying a lot? What's better? One of the most frequent mistakes is that you tell the patients, oh, just rest, be quiet or don't, don't do too much. The opposite is important. You should challenge the patient. The patient should always try to go as far as possible. And if he or she is better, then tell her to even perform even better. Mm -hmm. So the continuous challenge is very important. As in normal life, as you learn a language, you learn something else, you learn to play tennis, uh, it's the same thing. If you don't adjust what you learn to your current level, you will not improve further. Mm -hmm. So constant training, constantly challenging yourself. What about you know, social situations? Should you uh, encourage uh, a stroke patient to go out a lot? Yes, uh, that's precisely true. Uh, people should be active in every aspect of life because the brain then is, most, is best challenged. So active physically, practice, uh, walking, uh, running, things like that. Uh, socially, meet people, be active also with your club or with friends. So get back into life, basically. Yes. Well, thank you very much for being our guest today, Dr. Willinger. Thank you. Thank you.